Hello everyone, welcome to another video about Djangology. It's Djangology month on my YouTube channel and I'm making videos about Djangology, about that song, about solos played by famous guitar players. And of course I started this month with a solo by Django himself. And if you haven't seen that video, there's a link to that video in the description. And in this video we're gonna learn the solo that Burelli, Burelli Lagrand, played on the famous Gypsy project recordings. It's gonna be two videos just like I did with Django's solo. One video right here on YouTube and it's the first course and then I'll make another video uh, exclusively for my patrons on Patreon with the second course. So if you want to see that video there's a link to my Patreon in the description. Let's get started with the first course after this intro. Before I get started, a small warning. This solo is very hard to play, especially the bridge, and you will see that when we get there. In fact, I was playing it in the beginning of the video and I tried my very best, but there's one particular phrase in the bridge which is impossible. Also, don't attempt to play this solo with my backing track, because my backing track is way too fast. Because Django plays Djangology at 210 beats per minute, and Brady plays it at 200. So what I did is I took my backing track and I slowed it down to 90%. Now that version is on YouTube, but it's not public because if you slow down music, there are some artifacts, so I don't want people to find it. But you can still practice with it because I put a link to that hidden backing track in the description. So let's get started with the first phrase. Here it is slow, a little faster, and then with the backing track. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This first phrase is not particularly difficult, there's a tricky part in it, but it is doable. So it starts with this triplet, again it's a hammer-on, up, just the same way I did it in the Django solo. There is B minor arpeggio, you can do all down, or you could maybe do the B up, up, depending if you're comfortable with starting with an upstroke on a new string. I think I prefer to do all down, but sometimes I sneak in an, an upstroke. Here's the tricky part. You get two, one, two, two, one, and that's a little bit unwieldy, a little bit uncomfortable. You have to be very precise, practice it slowly. And then there's this big jump, which is also not the most comfortable. The most important thing is though, that you time it well, that you play a swinging phrase. It's very easy to make that sweep sound rushed. Something like that. You wanna keep the swing eighth notes alive, right? T, D, 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 D. Another important aspect is to play precise quarter notes to contrast the eighth notes. So for example, in the third bar, those E's are quarter notes, don't rush them. There. Swing. You see, those, those quarter notes have to be very precise, they have to be exactly on the beat, so practice with a metronome. I have a metronome system to practice these lines with, and if you don't know about it, there's a link to that system in the description. Let's go to the second phrase. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, 
two, three, four, one, two. starts with a triplet. You couldn't see it on the screen because there was no room for it, but of course if you download my tabs from my Patreon, you can see it. And then we have these Bs. So the first one is on the beat, on beat 1, on beat 3, and then on beat 1 again, and then on two ends. And it's very important to be precise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, end. And then another thing is you could make little slides up. That's typical Django, and I think Birelli is doing it too. It's a little bit difficult because you're so high up on the neck and you can't always hear it, especially when you play it slowly. But if I play it in the correct tempo, you can probably hear it. Three, four, one, two. It's a little thing at the end of the notes. It's not something that you could pinpoint exactly like you have to do it like this or rhythmically. It's just a little subtlety. And then a half note bend, bend back, and then there's this whole phrase on one string, and I don't know what fingering Brady is using, of course, but my fingering is maybe more like a violin player would play it with the three, two, one, or the two, one fingerings going down. So if you don't like that fingering, you can use your own one, but I think this is pretty handy. It doesn't require too much shifting. Because I bet if Stochler would play this, he would do lots of shifting with one finger, like the dragging action, and it would sound very precise. But I'm not capable of doing stuff like this. Like, I want to hear this, and then drag my finger. Sounds imprecise. That's why I'm using that fingering, shifting with 3, 2, 1, 2, 1. If you are used to the dragging action with your finger, you, maybe you can change it to that. But if you're not used to it, I would recommend my fingering, actually, because it's easier to practice and probably in the end more precise. Let's go to that impossible to play bridge. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you listen to Beretti play it, he's also not playing it completely clean. A, a lot cleaner than I'm playing it, for sure. But it's so fast, and he's playing it faster than me even. I think my backing track at 90% is a little bit slower than 200. The trick is for the first three bars to play the first note of a group of four with an accent. And maybe you're thinking, why are you shifting so much? Why not just play with four to one like this? I would say try it out and see what you can do faster because I for sure cannot do that faster than just do three, one, one, one. Like that. It just seems to be easier for me and I'm a violin player, so I'm used to using that fourth finger, but for this lick, I, I wanna have my third finger on that first uh, note of a group of four and I think it will be that for most people especially at this tempo So what you want to do is you want to Hit that first note on the beat and the rest of the notes you just have to do your best just play even 16th notes with your right hand And just move your hands and make sure that you are synced on that first note of a group of four So I'm hearing on my head.
that first note of a group of four. And then you just speed it up. Now that phrase is impossible to play and I would say just do the best you can and see how many notes you can hit. You can practice it slowly and try to be very precise. You could do this. And I say, okay, that A is on the beat. And then this E flat. And focus on that, I did that for many times and speed it up. But as soon as you get to the real tempo, it's so fast, it's almost impossible. No, it's impossible to play. By all means, practice it, but also practice my cheat. Uh, you didn't see it on the screen, but it is in the PDF that I'm uploading to Patreon. My cheat is like this. That lick is so much easier, you will see if you play it. Then the bridge would be like this. I mean, it's still difficult, but this action is so much easier to play than... There's just more sc string crossings, there's a double downstroke. I'm eliminating the double downstroke in my lick. Just much easier to play fast, and much more comfortable, and you won't mess it up quite as much, though it's still fast. Let's go to the last lick. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm not completely happy with the way I played it with the backing track. Uh, it's rushing at some points, and that's a good lesson for me, because it's easy to fix. It's very specific points I'm rushing, and I can show you those points so you don't have to do it. So the first two bars are quite easy. There's the first point. I'm not used to playing a note, and then that same note with a bend. So I'm playing that's the second note too fast. I'm playing like that on recording. You have to remember that second note is a swinging eighth note. Do, 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 da. So don't be too early. You have, you have time. One, two, three, four. And then this part, also a little bit sloppy. Although, uh, if you listen to the original ready recording, I can't really tell what he's doing there. I'm guessing he's playing some kind of triplet, so I made it the triplet that you also find in the Django solo. Of course, it's very uncomfortable. But I guess you have to focus on trying to hit the notes in the triplet in this case, because otherwise that jump is just too big. From If you don't hear that E and the G, you get... And that's just a jump that seems a little bit out of place. So let me try it again and play a clear triplet. One, two, three, four. It's much better. Of course, this is way too slow. Let's do a little bit faster. One, two, one, two, three, four. That was okay. Not as good as when I played it slowly. So I have to put the work in there and practice with a metronome and just do the same things that I'm always advising all of you to do. Practice slowly and slowly bring it up to speed. Then we get this last uh, kind of tremolo thing. And I wrote a tremolo note, right? A G with a two of of those lines, that means tremolo. But in this tempo, you can just play 16th notes. I was doing that, right? One, two, three, four. So it's four notes per quarter note. And then on the last quarter note, I just play, because I want to go to that high B. And it says a slide, that's the way 
really plays it probably with one finger like but in the beginning you could just play uh, chromatically so one two three four and then if you want to incorporate the sliding motion you could maybe play it with three fingers and then slide those last two notes with your third finger so you still get the illusion of a slide or you just play with four fingers sounds fine too it's also important that you play a vibrato on the G while playing those 60 notes or while playing tremolo because if you do this kind of thing in a slower tempo you're probably not gonna play 60 notes you're gonna play real tremolo it's kind of a frantic sound it comes from Django he does this in several recordings but the recording I recall he's doing that is um, I think the first recording of Dinah. A lot of cool stuff in this solo, but very, very hard. For everyone, including me, except probably for uh, Beretti, probably very easy for him. I need to put in some more practice to play it even cleaner, and uh, I need to practice the second chorus, because of course I will make the follow-up video to this video with the second chorus. If you want to have access to that video, check out my Patreon. Uh, the second video will be available for my $10 patrons, but you can download the tab for this video already at the $5 level. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye!